What was the most painful moment of your life? Infected tooth. Couldn't sleep the pain was so intense. They were going to give me a root canal. However, they couldn't get it numb from the outside. The dentist proceeded to drill my infected throbbing tooth, while two assistants pinned my shoulders, then injected Novocaine directly into the root. It was the most intense pain followed by the most blissful release of endorphins. Once the numbness kicked it, I laughed with tears streaming from my eyes for a good 10 minutes once I was numb. Oh, and this happened on my birthday. Not physical pain. But no physical or emotional event has scarred me quite like this one. When I was about 12 I was snooping around my parents closet, squatting down to the floor. I noticed a little grey bean on the ground. It was opaque and squishy like a gel pill. I noticed it had a few spots on it. I couldn't for the life of me figure out what this was, and I tried for some moments, to break it with my fingers, to see what was inside. No luck. I was super curious, so I decided I'd bite off the top. To squeeze the inside out, I put the top bit in between my canines and bit down. It popped violently, sending a spray of dark red into my mouth. It was a tick. The dots on the side were legs. It was full of something's blood. I gagged, recoiling in absolute horror, and ran to wash my mouth out. I can't describe the pit of fear and regret that formed in my stomach, but I can tell you it's still there. I literally want to vomit every time I think about it. Part of me thinks I'll eventually die of some weird parasite that's been living in my gut for decades. I have cysts on my ovaries, PCOS, and once when I was in high school, one of them ruptured on the bus ride home. Literally the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. I couldn't sit, but I also couldn't stand properly, and had to kneel in this weird crouching position on the bus, until we finally reached my stop. I was in so much pain that I was throwing up when my dad drove me to the hospital, and once I got there I could barely function. I had to walk down a long hallway to the emergency room, sweating, in pain, and barely able to stand. I'm surprised I didn't pass out. One of the worst parts besides the pain, however, was the ear doctor that was completely convinced I was having a miscarriage, despite the lack of blood, and me insisting over and over again that I was a virgin. He kept shushing me, and telling me it's alright, we are completely confidential here, when I insisted I had never had intimate time. It wasn't until he was off shift and an actually competent doctor came in hours later, that I finally had an ultrasound done, and they informed me a cyst had ruptured, and all that pain was for less than a teaspoon of blood. Kudos to the kind nurse, who brought me a blanket fresh out of the dryer though. This is more of a mental hurt. When I was in college I lived in a suite there were 6 of us all together, and we had a habit of doing surprise parties for everyone on their birthday. I was pumped, because I never had one and always wanted one. My birthday is in June which I understand is an issue, but I wouldn't have minded an early one. I asked my friend, if they would be doing one for me, and I was told we didn't have time for mine. Two days later they did one for someone else in the suite. I was so hurt, that they didn't care about me at all. I regretted everything I had ever done for them. Had a doctor pull a toothpick out of my foot with no anesthetic. I was at my grandmother's house, and got it in my foot. So my grandpa pulled most of it out with some pliers, but a piece got stuck so after like 3 days my foot smile up, and I couldn't walk. So we went to see a drive. His solution was to have my mother hold me down, while he cut a wider opening with some scissors, then reached in with forceps and jersey the piece out. That's the first time I cursed in form of my mother and I didn't get in trouble. My maximum pain was when, being fitted with a metal halo for a brain MRI, the four screws on the halo, had to actually contact my skull bones, and poke slightly into them. The staff first injected liberal amounts of Novocaine into the four locations, then quickly tightened the screws, even with the Novocaine. The pain of having screws inserted directly into skull bones was excruciating. It softened after about 15 seconds later as the substances took effect, but that first 15 seconds is quite memorable. I caught my wife in an affair and it totally broke me. But the worst part was, when I found out, that the affair was longer than our marriage and that none of the children were mine. Just kinda woke up one day, and found out my entire adult life was a lie. She settled down with him in a nice little house they bought, while she was still married to me. He dumped her, because he couldn't deal with the kids. Wow, I have such a wide selection. I guess these are the top two. March 28th, 
1981, I'm 16, it's an early spring Saturday afternoon, my dad goes upstairs for a quick afternoon nap, about 20 minutes later my mother starts screaming, as she finds he died suddenly in his sleep, I looked in, and saw my dad dead in his bed, that was almost 41 years ago, and I still remember it clearly, May 7th, 1985, I'm 20 and a college junior, I had been dating a girl in college for a few months and I really loved her. I'm not the greatest looking man in the world, so I didn't have a lot of luck with women. Didn't help that I had no money or a car. After class on this date, we went to the student union building, and she told me we need to talk. She told me she didn't love me, and didn't know why. My heart was completely shattered. I was never the same emotionally after. That every romantic dream I had ever had up to, that point was destroyed. My world became a lot more dark and cynical. I have others. These two stand out. I went to jail for 3 months for something I was found innocent of, and all charges dropped. During my time in jail my ex had my perfectly healthy 6 year old pitbull, and she knew how much I loved that dog. BC of the nature of the crime I was being accused of she didn't bother waiting to see if I was guilty or not, and had my dog put down the day before I was released. I still haven't emotionally vented or acted and that's how I know it messed me up good. But in a time I think how my dog's last thought it was where's my dad slash human. Why hasn't he come back? Why am I being dropped off at this strange place? Man, that, it hurts. When I was 12, I was woken in the middle of the night by the sound of my grandmother screaming. I was really confused as I was living in the UK at the time and my grandparents were only visiting from the states. She was wailing and making the most terrible sound. I could hear my dad downstairs on the phone to someone in America asking about the murder of someone with my grandfather's name. Again completely confused, because my grandfather was there in the UK. My parents kept closing my door, and kept trying to keep it quiet until early the next day when my mum called me, and my sister into her room, and told us, that someone had murdered her brother. He was a university professor, and one of his students had shot him and his colleagues. It was the worst thing I've ever seen you could see her just emotionally collapsing on herself as she said it. It was like watching a star burn out. And then we went downstairs and my grandparents were there. My grandmother was crying which I could compute. But my grandfather was just sitting quietly. He'd just lost his only son and namesake and I don't think he could even process it. They had to fly to San Diego that day. I didn't see them for a year or so. And then a bit later we moved to America to help look after them. My grandfather never really recovered. He went to bed on the night of August 15th, 1996 and woke up a different person. His body died a few years later, but the man I had loved and hero worship slipped away that day. The absolute pain of that time is something I've never matched, the closest being my wife had a miscarriage, and the thing is, is not over 25 years later. It absolutely devastated my mother who still struggles with grief issues. My cousin grew up without his dad. There are PTSD and anxiety issues all over the family. Now that I'm a father I'm terrified of losing one of my boys like that. And it's one of those fears that's difficult to rationally dismiss. Because it's based on a thing that happened. Wouldn't wish the experience on my worst enemy. Love of my life completely ghosted me out of the blue after a decades long relationship. Then shows up at my work hanging all over some other person right in front of me. I asked what was up, and got the response what are you talking about, and then back to ignoring me, like I was a complete stranger. I've been shot and blown up in a fireball, but this heartbreak is easily the worst thing that's ever happened to me by a really long stretch. I quit my job, and moved out of the city, just to avoid seeing that ever again. This was 2 years ago, and I still lose sleep from it, and wake up from the nightmares. It was a painful moment, that made decades worth of memories extremely painful, and has made me question reality and life.